In this video, I'll talk through the process of adding context to a map using titles, legends and other elements. This map shows shootings in the Bronx borough of New York City in 2019. First, I'm going to create a basic map that we can add to. Before making the map, I'll load the packages and data we need, then estimate the density of shootings in the Bronx using the hotspot KDE function. We've covered in previous videos how to wrangle data and use kernel density estimation to find concentrations of crime, so I won't cover them again here. Now I've prepared the data, I can make a basic density map with ggplot. Again, this is code you've seen in previous videos, so I won't go over it. Now we've created a map, we can start to improve it by adding some context. The first thing we can do is give the map a title. We do this by adding the labs function to our existing ggplot stack. Labs is short for labels. I'm going to use a declarative title that tells the readers what the main takeaway message is. The purpose of this map is to show where shootings concentrate, so the main takeaway is that shootings are concentrated in particular parts of the Bronx. Now I prefer to include in the title the names of some neighbourhoods where shootings concentrate most, because maps are easier to interpret if we use the terms that readers themselves use to describe different areas. But we can see that on this map there are several concentrations of shootings, so if I listed all the neighbourhoods, the map title would get very long. If I rerun the ggplot stack of code now that I've added the labs function, we can see the title has appeared on the map. As well as a declarative title, I want to add a bit more descriptive context to the map. I can do this by using the subtitle argument to the labs function to put a subtitle between the title and the map. Adding a little more information using a subtitle can be useful to help readers understand what a map shows or to proactively answer any questions readers might have. In this case, I've used the subtitle to make it clear the data includes both fatal and non-fatal shootings, that the data comes from the police, and that it covers the year 2019. We can now see the subtitle has appeared below the main title. The subtitle is probably a bit too visually prominent, but I'll deal with that in a minute. Next, I want to add some administrative information to the map. This map uses a base map that is based on data from OpenStreetMap and it's a condition of using OpenStreetMap data that I acknowledge this on the map, so I need to add that. At the same time, it is good practice to let readers know who made this map, when it was made, and what the source of the crime data is. This all helps readers to judge how reliable the map is likely to be. You would probably trust an analytical report less if you didn't know who had written it, and the same would probably be true of a map. This administrative information is likely to be useful to some readers, but we want to place it lower down the visual hierarchy of the map than the elements we've already loaded. If we added more information to the top of the map, it might make the area containing the map title and subtitle so big that it would be more visually prominent than the data. Instead, we always want to make sure that the data is the most prominent thing on the map. To add information to the map at a lower level on the visual hierarchy, we can use the caption argument to the labs function, which adds text below the map. The value I'm providing for the caption argument here is quite long. One thing to note is that I'm using the string glue function from the string R package because that allows me to include R code directly in the caption text. When I put R code in braces like this, the string glue function will run that code and add the result to the rest of the text. In this case, the R code I'm including uses the today function from the lubridate package to add today's date to the plot caption automatically. I've also used a new line character, which is a backslash followed by the letter N, to break the caption manually over three lines. If I don't do this, the caption would flow off the right hand side of the map and wouldn't be readable. As I said before, I think the map subtitle and the caption are a bit too visually prominent. To make sure that readers can clearly see what information on the map is important, I'm going to make both the subtitle and caption text slightly smaller, as well as changing the caption text to a lighter shade of grey. To do that, I can use the theme function from the ggplot2 package and add it to the existing ggplot stack. The theme function lets us control the appearance of lots of elements on the map. And because the theme function allows us to control every element on a map in lots of different ways, the values that we need to provide for the each argument can be quite complicated. Fortunately, we can use helper functions to make providing the right values as easy as possible. There is a helper function for each type of map element that we might want to control. Since the subtitle and caption are both text elements, we can control them with the element text 
helper function. We can use element text to control the size of the text, which font is used, what color the text is, and so on. In this case, we just want to make the subtitle text a little smaller than the default size. Instead of looking up the default font size and working out how much smaller we want the text to be, we can instead use the rel helper function to specify that we want the text to be 0.8 times or 80% of the default size. We can also use the element text helper function to make the caption text smaller. At the same time, we can change the color of the caption text by setting the color argument. Gray67 is one of the preset color names that are included in R. We can also left align the caption text by setting the hjust argument to zero. hjust takes any number between zero and one, with zero meaning left aligned, 0.5 meaning centered, and one meaning right aligned. When we run this code as part of the existing ggplot stack, we can now see that the subtitle and caption on the map are less visually prominent. The next thing we can add to our map is a legend. ggplot will automatically add a legend whenever we use the AES function to specify that the visual appearance of the map should be partly controlled by values in the data. On this map, the colors are controlled by the KDE column of the shootings KDE object, so ggplot has added a legend to the map automatically. The automatic legend isn't bad, but we can make a few changes to make it easier for readers to understand. First, we can change the legend's title KDE to something more meaningful for readers who might never have heard of kernel density estimation. To do that, we can add another argument to the labs function in our ggplot stack. You might think the legend title would be controlled using the legend argument of the labs function, but that doesn't work because some maps might have multiple legends for different aesthetics, each of which might need a separate title. Since it is the fill aesthetic that's being controlled by the data, we can specify the fill argument to the labs function to provide a title for the legend that explains the shades of color on the map. You can see that once again, I've used a new line character to break the legend title across two lines. The next thing I want to deal with is the labels alongside the color bar on the legend. These are raw kernel density values, which aren't likely to be very meaningful to most people looking at this map. To avoid confusing readers, I'll replace those numbers with two labels, one at either end of the color bar, to show which colors correspond to the highest and lowest density of shootings. We can control where the labels appear on the color bar using the breaks argument of the scale fill distiller function, which we've already added to the ggplot stack to control what colors the map uses. The reasons why we control the legend using one of the scale family of functions are quite obscure, but it does have several advantages I won't go into now. Since I want the two labels on the color bar to be at the maximum and minimum values, I need to specify those as the value of the breaks argument. I could look at the data and find those values manually, but I might make a mistake in copying them over, and if the data is subsequently changed, I'd need to go back and look again. Instead, I'm going to extract the KDE column from the shootings KDE object using the pull function from the dplyr package, and then extract the minimum and maximum values using the range function. That way, if I later decide to use the same code to produce an updated version of the map with new data, the values will update automatically. The final thing I need to add to the scale fill distiller function is the text of the labels that I want to add to the legend. I do this using the labels argument. Since there are going to be two labels, I need to provide two values. So I use the C function to combine two values together into a vector of labels. When I run the updated ggplot stack, I can see the legend title and labels have now changed to the values I wanted. The final thing I want to add to the map is a scale bar, so that readers who might not be familiar with the area can understand the distances between different places. Most readers of this map are likely to know the area, so they probably won't need a scale bar. Now, because of that, I could choose not to include a scale bar at all, but if I'm going to include one, it needs to be very low on the visual hierarchy. You can add a scale bar to the map using the annotation scale function from the GG spatial package. To make sure the scale bar has low visual prominence, I'm going to use the least obtrusive style of scale bar that I can specify, using the style argument. I'm also going to move the scale from its default position in the bottom left of the map to the bottom right corner using the location argument. I'm doing this because otherwise the scale bar would overlap some of the areas with the highest density of shooting. If we compare the map that we've produced now with the one that we first produced, we can see that this final map is likely to be easier for readers to understand because they've got more context. It also looks more professional and it means that we've complied with requirements to do things like, for example, acknowledge the sources of the data that we're using. And it's for all these reasons 
adding context to a map can be really important. 